Hi and welcome back to another video in our GCC network setup series. Now on screen at the moment I've logged into the GCC via its web interface using the default IP address of 192.168.80.1 and what I've done is clicked on the network nodes icon at the top so here which is this symbol here and we're in the overview screen here at the left hand side so what we'll do is click on our home icon so it's this one with the it looks like the stack of paper so we'll click on that and this takes us into the overview dashboard so what we need to do to use the PBX is enable it first because it comes from the factory as default disabled so to enable it all we'll do is click the button here to turn it blue and confirm to enable PBX. Now what we need to do is give our PBX an IP address so that the phones will use this IP address to connect to the GCC with. So what we're going to do is use the next IP address in the range so instead of 192.168.80.1 we'll use 80.2 so we'll type in 192.168.80.2 so that will be the static IP address for our PBX running on the GCC so the IP address for 192.168.80.1 is to still used to access the network application running on the GCC but the 80.2 that we're entering here will be used to access the PBX section of the GCC hopefully that makes sense so what we we'll do is click enable and then it's saying starting module please be patient so we'll just wait for the module to start now as you can see we've got a message on screen saying you have enabled PBX so what we'll do is click on enter now we're not going to use the setup wizard but what I'll do is take you through the steps so we'll go into enter now now here we are in the PBX section of our GCC and as you can see we've got nothing set up at the moment so there's no trunks available storage is very low so it's set at six percent at the moment so we're using 1.7 gigabytes out of 27 gigabytes so what we're going to do is set up our trunk with our voice over ip provider so what we're going to do is put in the trunk details from voip phone so to do this what we're going to do is click on extensions trunks at the left hand side then go to voice over IP trunks so VoIP trunks then what we'll do is collect trunk group so select this and then click add trunk group now for type we leave that set as register SIP trunk in the provider name we'll type in VoIP phone so the name of our voice over IP trunk provider then for host name we'll type in their host name which is SIP Dot VoIP phone dot net. yours will be different depending on which provider you're using so just check with your provider what the host name is it could either be an IP address or it could be a named address like this so sip.voipphone.net then for dedicated VLAN they do not have a dedicated VLAN so I'll leave that as non transport will leave as UDP so what we'll do is scroll down to trunk registration number and in the trunk registration number what we're doing is typing in our account number for our provider so here I'll type this in which is provided in the account for VoIP phone so it's it's shown in the uh, account details on our provider's website and then what we'll do is type in the password and then again the authorization ID is the same as the account number then what we need to do is go down and click save at the bottom so now that you can see it's taking us back to the list of trunk groups so here we have our provider so what we'll do is just click on apply changes at the top here 
this should then load all the information that we've just keyed in into the GCC. So now what we can do is go back to the dashboard and see if it's successfully connected to VoIP phone. So what we'll do is click on system status at the left hand side and then click on the dashboard. And as you can see, it's got VoIP phone here under trunks and we've got one available. So it's got a blue dot against it. And if we hover over the blue dot, you see it's saying registered. So it's successfully registered the GCC box and linked it to our voice over IP telephone trunk line provider. So that's that part done. So now what we need to do is configure the extension. So we need to add the WP816 as an extension and allocate it an extension telephone number. So to do this, what we need to do is go to extension add trunk at the left hand side and then what we'll do is select extensions. So then what we'll do is click on add to add an extension. And then here it's taken us into the create new extension screen. So we're in basic settings as well here. So for the select extension type, it will be a SIP extension, which is there by default. Select add method. We can see leave this as single because we just have one extension to add. And then for general, you see the extension number is already set by default as 1000 for the first extension. And here you'll see we've got call privileges. And what we need to do to allow incoming and outgoing calls to complete properly, we need to select a call privileges level. So at the moment it's set to internal. So what that means is it can only ring an extension connected to the GCC box. So to make outgoing calls, we need to select this and change it to local. Now, all we need to note down is the extension number. So 1000. And then what we need to do is note down the SIP password here. So that's been automatically generated because we'll need these two items to enter them into the WP816. So we'll enter them into account one. If you recall, we had two accounts on there, so it can have two accounts, but I'll show you that again to recap. So click save, and this will take us back to the list of extensions, as you can see, and we've got a status of unregistered. So what we'll do is open up a new browser tab and uh, we'll type in the IP address of our WP816's web interface. So if you recall, we entered that earlier. So we're typing in that again. And here it's taken us into the welcome to WP816. So what we need to do is put in the username, which is admin, and then the password that we created earlier. If you remember, we changed it so we had the default one on the telephone keypad and then we changed the password. So what we're doing is entering the password in there to what we changed it to and click login. Then this takes us into account status at the left hand side, as you can see, uh, we've got the screen up for account status. So what we need to do for account one is under operation, click the pen symbol. Then for the account name, we'll call this extension 1000. And for the SIP server, we're entering 192.168.80.2. So if you recall, when we enabled the PBX in the GCC, we gave it an IP address. Now, this is the IP address that you enter in for your extensions for the SIP server. So 192.168.80.2. And then scroll down to SIP user ID which is 1000. So that's the extension number and the SIP authentication ID again is 1000. And then for the SIP authentication password, we will type in the password that we've just noted down in our list of extensions, what we just created in the GCC. So we'll enter the password in and then here we typed in the account name. So extension 1000 SIP server 192 168.80.2. Now you also have to type in that same IP address for SIP server 
in the outbound proxy. So this is what I've just done and then click save and apply and here you'll see we've got account one and we've got a green symbol against it means it's connected to our GCC. So now that we've connected that we can log out of the WP816 so we'll click exit or log off at the top right corner here close that window and then back in our GCC box you will see that we've now got the extensions so we've got extension 1000 so it's a WP816 and it's showing a status idle and we've got a green dot against it mean it's successfully connected to our GCC box so that's basically how easy it is to link your WP816 to the GCC or in fact any Grandstream telephone you would follow the similar procedure so you go into the web control panel for your Grandstream telephone set up the account in there and also link it to the GCC box by adding another extension account here in the list using the add button so now what I've done is click back onto our PBX dashboard as you will see here so the PBX at the top so this icon and then I've selected dashboard so now that we've set up and linked our extension so our WP816 cordless Wi-Fi telephone to our GCC and we've also set up our voice over IP telephone providers trunk line into our GCC what we now need to do is for incoming calls we need to tell the GCC box where to route our incoming calls to so as we've only got one extension we want to tell the GCC box to route all incoming calls to the WP816 so extension 1000 so to do this what we need to do is click on extensions and trunk at the left hand side and then select inbound routes then from the inbound route screen we need to click on add and then for trunks you'll see we've got trunk group VoIP phone in there by default because VoIP phone is the only one we have and for pattern we need to enter an underscore and then an exclamation mark so this means that any number pattern will get directed so then for the inbound root name we'll call it inbound underscore from underscore VoIP phone then what we'll do is scroll down to default mode and for default destination click in the box and select extension and as you'll see we've got extension 1000 automatically in there which means that it will now route all incoming calls to extension 1000 so what we'll do is click save and then at the top click apply changes now what I'm going to do is just dial the VoIP phone telephone number and then uh, WP816 cordless telephone should ring so I'm just dialing the number on another telephone that I have and as you can hear the WP816 did actually ring for the call so now what we need to do is set up our outbound routes so to do this we'll click outbound routes and then for the outbound routes screen click add and then for the outbound rule we'll call this all underscore outgoing underscore calls and for the pattern we need to enter 11 X characters so any UK telephone number has 11 digits so what we need to do is enter 11 X's and then for the main trunk for the trunk click in the box and select trunk group VoIP phone and then what we need to do is for privilege level we need to set this to local however this means that any calls not just local calls will be accepted and go out through VoIP phone so we'll click save at the bottom and then click apply changes so what we can do is test this by making an outgoing call 
to my other telephone from the WP816. So I'll just dial the number and in a second we should hear my telephone on my desk. It should ring. And here we go from our GCC via our WP816 mobile telephone. So that completes setting up of the basic functions for our PBX in our GCC and also our WP816 cordless Wi-Fi telephone. So I hope you found this video useful. Hope it's not too complicated for you and I hope I've made it sort of easy to follow. We'll do some more videos so we'll go in depth into more functions because there's an awful lot of functions in the PBX and the GCC box in the networking applications. So for example in the network nodes there's a lot more information. Firewall is very comprehensive, has so many features. It's got SSL proxy, intrusion prevention, anti-malware, content control so you can filter it by application. It's got IDS, IPS packet inspection. So we'll go into all that in future videos. But for this video, I think we'll end it now rather than make it too long. Hopefully it's not been too long for you. Anyway, thanks for watching this video and look out for more videos coming soon. Take care. Bye for now.